Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we find out what Lenny could do with his distillery if he had an investor willing to add $200 million into his business. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Katie Joyce, Evan Van Skoik, and Lenny Eckstein. Hey gang, what's up? Howdy. Hello, hello. Hello. Hey. hey oh so yes we are going to be talking to lenny today we'll put some parameters on him we want to make sure he doesn't take that 200 million and keep most of it for himself it's got to be put into the business so we'll talk about that after the break for right now becca is literally just coming home from bourbon festival so tell us what it was like this year what was going on and and what uh what sort of things did you see who'd you meet all that kind of good stuff um it was great this was actually my first bourbon festival um really? or the first kentucky bourbon festival i've been to obviously steve i've been to new orleans with you sure sure um but this is the very first uh kentucky bourbon festival and from what i gather from uh the other festival goers um this uh layout that, that they're doing is a lot better than years before where years yeah. before it was um you know the kids were allowed in there uh i don't think that they capped the capacity i think that like everyone could just come and go sure to the, yes the it was a free free thing so you just yeah. walk around and and you had yeah. to pay for samples um yeah. back then as well uh where now i don't remember i don't know what the the number is that they cap it at with uh people that can go uh but they do a limited amount of people that can go there's vip tickets things like that um and then included in your ticket price is your samples. And so you're, you're not walking from one to the next and you're not going, well, I don't want to taste theirs because it's $15 to taste that. And I'd rather not do that. Or like, it's going to be $25 to taste this. You just got to go up to any of them and they'll give you pours. Now they, they get to decide it. Like they don't, you know, they're, they're not necessarily gonna be just pouring all their best stuff for you. Sure. Um, George T. Stagg is just flowing. Yeah. They're there. not just like <laughs> pouring that the entire time. Although that would be awesome. But if yeah. you do, maybe have a little bit of a connection there with some people, then you get to try some stuff that uh, you maybe wouldn't be able to because, you know, if anyone's smart, they'll bring along that uh, the special under the table. Pour. Oh yeah. That's a big part of festivals, right? Lenny, the, the if you know the, the distiller, yeah. Yeah. yeah ask, the ones ask for the uh, that are behind stuff. the bar where, where someone that's in the industry or a friend of yours walks up and they go, yeah, this all looks great. Uh, is there anything special behind the bar? Wink, wink nod and you go if you hate them you say no this is literally it but if they're friends of yours then you go i've got a little bit something special for you and like uh my pal steven fonte he grabbed the uh the limited edition 2022 uh yellowstone whoa so i gotta taste that and i gotta taste it more than once <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> nice. i went up there and i I, nice. I went up there once and he had they were just about to run out and uh mr fonte gave me a nice little pour me and my brother um and then the next day he had gone back to the distillery and grabbed some more and so i came back and i said hey can i have a little bit more of that i loved it and he said absolutely whatever you want um said, so that's that's obviously different, like the different best. outfit, different hat. Yeah, I brought, looked different. I had a different, a, a different, I had a different color hat on. I looked a little bit different today, so I got another special pour. <laughs> nice. um, but 
I hate to say this uh, for the poor uh, heritage brands, but really the place to be at was over in the craft section. I mean, the heritage brands, like they had a nice setup. Everything was great. But over in the craft section is where you're in the trees. And it's just like fantastic. You've got like, there's a nice little breeze. There's tons of tree coverage. And so it's, it's easy over there. And like, that was really like where everyone preferred to be at this year. Like everyone would go over to heritage brands to grab a pour and then they leave and mm-hmm. they would go somewhere else because where the heritage brands were at, there was no trees and just no real overhang. So that wasn't that fun, but being over in the craft section, that was uh heritage that was, bourbon hates trees. That was uh, the ticket. And then of course there was the, uh, the barrel <clears throat> bourbon, uh, seagrass. Slushies. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shout out to Tony Friend on that one. He said, we got to go get slushies. They got seagrass slushies. And I said, are you fucking kidding me? I saw those on his stories. Those looked so good. They were amazing. And the, the, the best thing to do was you'd go up, you would ask for a slushie, and then you would ask for a sample of seagrass. And then you'd leave with these two in your hand. And then you'd dump the seagrass into your slush and have extra seagrass in your slushie. Ooh. Man. Nice. Proud move right there. Yeah. That was seagrass floater. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was good. delicious. Man. Yeah. You gotta see, you know, a little bit of everyone. Also, when you start realizing, especially if like you're actually in the, the industry or if you just like stay up to date on who's who, you could stand there and you would just see people going by. You'd see Barry Brian Gurgle. You see Barry, of course, everywhere because Barry's everywhere all the time. But like we saw just a little bit of everybody out there. Um Bernie Lubbers, obviously Stephen Fonte. Uh, I I stopped Dan McKee, who was just appalled that I even would stop and say hello to Dan, which was the funniest thing I told Stephen about earlier. Dan right. was just like, "Oh my God, thank you so much for stopping and talking to me." And I'm like, "Why would I not stop?" And talk <laughs> Dan to just you walks Dan? through. No one knows who he is. It, it's so crazy. I'm it, so, like, I'm not even kidding. He sounded amazed when I said, "Master Distiller from Mixers is a big Dan deal." Dan McKee. Yeah. I'm Miss Becca Sue. We podcast together. I'm Rebecca Neely. And he just goes, oh my God, thank you so much for stopping and talking to me. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. And then I went, this is my brother, Eddie. Eddie, this is Dan McKee, the master distiller at Mictors. He goes, thank you so much for saying that. And I'm like, who the fuck hurt Dan McKee? Right. <laughs> okay. That's what World's pissed me off. Humble dude. Yes. Who was mean to Dan McKee that made him feel like he shouldn't be just so like, just, yes, I am the master distiller. Probably Wes Harden. Probably Wes. Wes broke him down. <laughs> oh, sounds about right. Yeah, but yeah, it was a, it was a really good time, and it was fun. Wow. And like I said, I think that the way that they set it up was really good. My husband talked a little bit at a few different things, uh, which was cool. And people were asking for autographs, and people came from kind of all over the place, which was just it was neat, and it was a really good time. That's good. Very cool. Sounds like a great event. Put it back on the list. It was. Uh, it got bad for a while. Uh, it, uh, it's. Uh, they're on the. We're on the right track. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they literally had like a flea market there where you could go and buy yes. socks if you wanted. And I'm not talking bourbon socks. I'm talking, you know, like you see literally at any flea market anywhere in America and stuff. I mean, yeah, this crazy. definitely they changed that. There was a flea market going on downtown uh-huh. uh, at the festival. Yeah, it definitely felt more like an exclusive, a more a, an actual. It it. It felt like the bourbon festival in Bardstown is what it felt like. Like that's what I would have expected it to be was how it was. Um, and so I'm happy that I'm not tainted by years past. Yeah. Well, guess what, gang? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Katie Joyce. Katie, what do you got there? Well, talking about the uh, hit on the craft spirits, uh, I have some still 630 of their Big Jake. Big Jake. Okay. Well, coffee there. Yeah. Huh? Yes, getting started off on our podcasting with coffee. Okay, and pizza. Yes, coffee and pizza, of course. <laughs> Always, uh, and what everybody together. Everybody has that together. A natural pairing. Yeah. Not uh, yes. Uh, it's. I'm surprised they don't put it on the bottle. Of <laughs> it's here suggested. Of it's suggested on pizza, the back. Especially label. barbecue chicken pizza. Just yeah, yeah. That's mm-hmm. what. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. I was expecting great for some reason, but uh, I yeah. because it's a new bottle, but still, still very good. Could be very, could be enough to win. We'll see. We'll see. Evan, you're next. All right. I'm going to break out some Stumpy's Old Monroe, a single barrel pit called Crim Brulee. Yeah. 
Yeah. We have Robert Licorice come in, and Evan brings the uh, the worst uh, ones he's got. He doesn't bring any of the good stuff in. Robert's like, man, I really want to try Stumpy's, and Evan's got, man, don't worry, I got I got a whole shelf of it at home. And he brings it in, and he's like, oh, that one's not really that good. You, know, you wouldn't like this one. He brings in four, and then all the, all the ones he doesn't like. He doesn't. I guess he was worried Robert was going to drink too much, because Robert can drink plenty. So I, I kind of get it, because Robert was putting them away. Maybe he was worried Robert was going to put too big of a dent in it. So, yeah, yeah. That, that that was not the pure thinking. I, I tried to get a good variety. And then I was immediately judged by my wife and then by Steve for what I brought. Well, you should have brought better stuff than Evan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if, he you either, if your wife brought the greatest it. hits. Here's what I would have brought, the greatest hits. I would have been like, these are going to be the four that you'll... You know, this is going to change your life. Most of those weren't open, so I brought, like, open stuff. <laughs> I, I can't do it right. It's, Hashtag it's, open your bottles. Yeah. It's too many. Up in court, too. Okay, okay. Katie, Katie's, Katie's still is better. Yeah, they're way better. All right. Uh, Miss Becca Sue, you're next. Um, I'm going to do... No, let's do this first. Um, I've got some Barker's Mill from uh, MB Rollin. Okay. Okay. Good, but I still think Katie's was better. Okay, this was better. Wow. All right, uh, Lenny, you're next. I've got some High West Rendezvous Rye. Okay. He's getting set up. Quite on the set. No, oh, way to talk through my cork box. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I feel like Lenny would have got it. Trash, anyways. Lenny would have got it, but he didn't. I talked over it, so it's, yeah. it's, it's really classic on you. Steve Akeley move. Yeah, yeah. So Katie has the lead. I've got square six here from Heaven Hill Gift Shop. Here we go. No, no, Katie's got it. Katie's got it. Katie got it fair and square. So there you go. All right. Pour there and cheers, gang. Cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking to Lenny about what would happen if an investor came in and said, I like what you're doing, you're making great whiskey, let's turn this into something big, I'll give you $200 million for the business, into the, put into the business, Lenny's still there, he's not leaving. We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers, leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. 
Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Hello, this is Matt Rainey, and you are listening to The Bourbon Daily. One day when I grow up, I'm going to grow a big boy beard, just like Colonel Steve. Welcome back to The Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking to Lenny about what he's going to do with his new $200 million investment. $200 million, Lenny. So, yeah, yeah. What What are some things you could do? And I know, like I said, I said earlier, the statue of Lenny out front probably yeah. one in philadelphia one in colorado different yeah and so a couple yeah. of statues that's like three and i'm for dollars. sure open to all reasonable suggestions from you guys <laughs> um that evan's would, got that some it statue. sounds like evan's got that's a few reason. so yeah i'm ready um and i guess i i want to preface this by saying uh i do not have the appetite for a distillery expansion anytime soon i mean right. i don't feel like we just finished one per se but god I- it's I could see that meeting going like that. And then he's like, okay, I got this figured out. Uh, Amy Eckstein, I'd like to talk to you about, uh, <laughs> and then, then all of a sudden Lenny's on board. He's like, all right, well, uh, let's do this. Fine, fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe. But in the spirit of, uh, you know, the subject, it's not a fun to think about because like, there's like, I don't know, anywhere from like one to 5 million. That's cool. But, you know, and by no means am I trying to say that's not a lot of money, but you know, in the world of, uh, actual production distillery, you know, you can only do so much with that. Um, what was the figure? 200 million that we're talking 200 million. about? 200 million bucks. Yeah. Not enough well, for Lenny. Not enough for yeah, Lenny. <laughs> I, t- I did mumble that earlier. Uh, it's not that it's not enough. I just feel like if you want to go really big, like as in buying mountains, uh, literal mountains, then uh, I don't know if it is enough. But I, so I'm going to throw a few things out there. And like I kind of scratched my head on this. Um, I think that. Colorado is lacking for the most quintessential Colorado distillery visitor experience right now. Okay. Um, I don't think Kentucky is by any means, you know, like you could, it's toss up as to which would be such a, you know, phenomenal visitor experience. And, uh, and there's some new ones coming online that could even take that. But in Colorado, there's some fun spots. I got to thinking like, we're already in a really cool spot in Buena Vista in terms of where our, very compact distillery is that makes one barrel per day um but the surrounding region is so badass and evan you kind of talked about this a little bit with regards to uh you know earlier before the show imagining where deer hammer might be i mean we're not yeah. you know it, it, as the fog parts in the morning we're not right nestled on the base of a mountain we are in downtown um but i thought like you know kind of carving up that money a little bit for around I don't know, like 30 to 80 million, we could probably buy a huge chunk of like a few hundred acres or more uh, at the base of Mount Princeton where there's a whole lot of hot springs and geothermal activity. Oh, cool. So uh, yeah, I I got to thinking like, wouldn't it be badass if we had both like, you know, uh, consistently flowing creek for all the process water needs, uh, geothermal for you know, for heating at the distillery, that would be huge. But then also, like visitor experience wise, like hot spring pools for people oh, to soak man. in. Incredible. So, yeah. yeah. So so there's this like lodge in Alaska where they have hot springs there. And yeah, they they turn it into like a big pool area and, and they talk they have pictures when it's forty below outside and people outside swimming in the hot springs and uh, you know, drinking, you know, so you could have an experience like that. Yeah. Did you say drinking the hot springs as in oh, drink, drinking 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 no they they, they like, have they have drinks in hand <laughs> and while gotcha. they're in the hot springs yeah yeah uh, sitting there with their coffee. like yeah, yeah. oh this is such good hot water <laughs> so, yeah so, stay warm. so nourishing <laughs> yeah a little danger from the vapors the dirty uh, bath but, but water yeah. <laughs> i thought that'd be pretty badass to have this this experience where people could fly into because there's an airport right there uh, you know, fly fishing, hot springs, cabins, camping, um, just, you know, down the road from the Continental Divide. Um, I would then take the rest of the funds and I would keep the distillery fairly small. I mean, not small, medium size, maybe like we produce, uh, you know, 200 or so barrels a year at Deerhammer. Currently I'm thinking up to about 5,000 barrels a year. 
That's for the most pretty, part, all big jump. Yeah, 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 big jump for sure. But I mean, with that much money, you got to do something meaningful besides buy hot springs. Right. Um, and then L- Lenny, you know, would, would, um, as you make as you make that jump, is the is the goal then nationwide distribution uh, uh, with this? Yeah. Or, yeah, at that size, I'd say for sure nationwide, but still. Mm-hmm reasonable enough that are you uh, still doing pot stills or are you are yeah. you doing the evil thing good well good. I'm, I'm going well good that. point though so yes to pot stills but also yes to a column still okay. because the remainder of ones would go entirely towards becoming the myth buster of all distilleries so so here so follow me on this okay. uh all experimental all the time not for entirety of releases but always running uh you know do various water profiles make any difference? No. Um, you know, like sweet mash experiments, sour mash experiments, yeast strain experiments, pot still versus column still bourbon, barrel proof, ent- barrel entry proof, like just going crazy on, you know, strip. I mean, okay. I, I make some enemies here, but stripping away some smoke and mirrors in the industry and just putting it all out there. I think that would be uh, the, the, the fun in all the headache that comes with massive expansion. Right. Yeah. Would you possibly put in an Arlo micro distillery? Oh, good call. Uh, by the time it's done, he would be in his 20s. Um, he'll probably be freeloading still, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be freeloading. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah, okay. Evan, you, you had some ideas. What, what, what would yeah, you like to see? I've, I've got a couple. So, let me, Lenny, let me run a couple at you. Uh, so, you, you're kind of on track to where I was thinking with my first idea is you move out of the downtown district and out onto a mountainside Uh, for anyone who needs like a visual of that. uh, I basically was thinking Colorado Lodge mountainside, Google it, click images. That's kind of what I was envisioning. You're like on a mountainside, like either overlooking a valley or you're like at the base of a mountain. Just don't Google squirt boating. Oh, no, no. That's... Wasn't planning on it. It takes you somewhere else <laughs> altogether. So you have this brand new facility, uh, you know, um, big, open, you know, tall ceilings. Uh, you can make it very easy to, you know, see a big, beautiful still when you walk in. Nice visitor experience. Uh, so that's that's idea number one. What do, you, what do you think of that one? Yeah, I think that's on point. I'd be uh, remiss to not follow that general path. And, and since you have an existing building downtown, if you wanted to convert that now, you could just turn that into like a tasting room bar experience. So people yeah. can still get your products where they're used to going to see you and then go out to your more experiential visit. Yeah. You know, I thought about Brilliant that also idea. because, you know, most of the folks in town are walking down the main strip uh, of our, well, our main street. Uh, I thought about, yeah, certainly we would like, uh, remove most of the equipment and maybe that become a pilot setup, but I still have my decommissioned original direct fire pot still. And I think that's like, certainly F you money enough to be like, Hey, insurance company, Hey, fire inspector, watch this biggest direct fire <laughs> pot still ever. And, uh, all rum production. Oh, He's not self insured. Yeah, yeah self insured. That become the rum distillery. Uh, then okay. maybe distillery only rum production. All right, fair enough. All right. the The second component of this is expanding into more of the uh, visitor experience, where um, it's more of a tourist destination. Right, you're you're kind of out there. It's what maybe like an hour and a half drive from a major city like Colorado yeah. Springs or something like that. Yeah. Hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so people may want to come out, drink and stay. So you could expand in like to Airbnb hotel lodge type of experience. Uh, maybe just your more traditional bed and breakfast mm, uh, and, and do some interesting things. Yeah. So people there at your like almost resort location now, and, and they're coming for like a whole weekend and, buying your products, you know, if they're going in, it's your restaurant. So, you know, you're earning all of the different revenue streams from not just am I visiting the distillery and purchasing a bottle, but now if you're there, it's now part of that. Right. Maybe there's a bus that goes back and forth between the two well, distillery locations. I, mean, I think that's land. enough money to and go then, bigger. I was thinking like a cloud turbo prop that I could fly people back and forth from the city to BV. I think oh, there you go. More baller. Wow. Yeah. Oh man. yeah, Pri- private helicopter had av- helicopter pads. One on the roof yes. of your existing building, and just 
<laughs> yeah, the insurance is going to be quite. Yeah, uh, that, that will chew up the money quick. <laughs> you know, we just made it more expensive if we're doing helicopters instead of planes, too. That's why I say I need more than two hundred million. Two hundred million yeah. is not enough. Yeah. So um, then the one that's completely different. Uh, if this was not on track, my other offer is if you are completely happy with your setup in Buena Vista, main expansion, and you start a new line of main malt. I like it. That's a good point. I had not thought in action. Um, that could work. I, I, I mean, the only other concept I was thinking along those lines, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Bentley Heritage Distillery in Nevada, but I hear that one's for sale for a cool $90 million. And uh, okay. that would be acquisitionable. And it sounds yes. like they have some pretty cool stuff going on. So that would be the easy path to expansion. Easy. Buy someone yeah. else's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, anything else, Katie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if you had $200 million, but it had to be totally unrelated to your current business. So not truly the original question we have here. Something, it just a different spark of an idea you have. What would you invest it into then? Um, I'd have to carve it up and think to it, but first thing right off the cuff would be uh, a giant uh, artificial wave pool for surfing. Okay. Uh, okay. Heated, so year-round surfing, even in the snow. Um, that would probably take $100 million, I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> the water rights are pretty expensive. Um, also... There's a pretty amazing chunk of land out here that might be uh, acquirable. That th it's been uh, situated for camping and huge music festivals, and uh, it's only about a mile from Deerhammer. Um, so I could see acquiring that and uh, moving Bourbon and Beyond over to Colorado and <laughs> giving Kentucky the finger and saying it's now Colorado <laughs> and Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna steal bourbon and beyond oh, i would name nice. it no one cares that you're from kentucky and right. move that festival over here okay makes sense well there's considering they can't get it right they they put it at the same time as the kentucky bourbon festival i i, I don't right. know what's going on well i was at the adi festival same time as kentucky bourbon festival. Oh, these people start need to start talking uh yeah yeah why, why why schedule three things that bourbon fans are into all at the exact same time oh. <laughs> the most competitive thing you can do is open your business next door to the other business. That's oh, true. There you go. There Home Depot's is right across the street from Lowe's. Yeah, Walgreens and uh, CVS. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but isn't this more of an industry of like supporting each other? And for an individual festival, it's not like they're opening this year round. It's a one-time event, so people have to just choose one or the other. So you're guaranteed to cut your available audience if you do it at the yeah. same time as another event yeah there you go i mean you might sh sh prove like oh i had the bigger event but you still are going to have less numbers yourself than if you although i like i like if that's just was their attitude of like we're going to show we're going to be the biggest event on that day and it's like cool you all will have less than if you did it separately but sure show that you were the biggest of that day <laughs> yeah and it's only it's only the the bourbon fans but they thin out the industry too because the industry has to True. staff you know they uh, both want the, the bourbon festival wants booths there uh bourbon and beyond wants bourbon distilleries represented they want people you know so it just it cheapens everything i think so yeah maybe i'll use the uh all those funds to buy out all of these festivals and change the dates okay yeah. kind of like yeah. a good good faith thing to do for the industry That'd be nice. would 200 yeah. million get you uh any of the kentucky distilleries I oh sure so. yeah yeah, yeah definitely of course yeah so yeah man fun money so there you go there is how lenny would spend his 200 million. sounds like a, a pretty good plan actually sounds like so, some fun stuff uh yeah and, and maybe if you, you end up do, going with the planes you, you just hire katie that that's a, that, i'd put that in the budget ah, too you yeah. can fly for you so there you go Damn. all right well we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us katie we'll start with you where can people find you you can find me over on Instagram at Katie Proof. Evan. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Wit Wisdom Whiskey and coming up with ideas of how to spend Lenny's money. <laughs> all right. Lenny. You can find me and the rest of Deerhammer on all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Deerhammer, on the web at Deerhammer.com. And you can also order our bottle shipped direct to your door from there. And you should come visit us at our massive new distillery in beautiful Buena Vista, Colorado. All right, Miss Becca Sue. 
You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue, one K, no C's. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. And please come by and see us at the ABV Barrel Shop. We are located in the St. Louis suburb of Arnold, Missouri. Or at least check us out at abvbarrelshop.com and sign up for our email distribution list. Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before? Before we get out of here i just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments it helps new people find the show which is very important to us if you like what we're doing with you please visit our patreon page at patreon.com backslash the abv network all right great job today gang for audience we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow looking forward to that until then take care everybody see ya see you guys bye, -bye. peace Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat Offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's Birthday Barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.